Let's walk through the rest of the Max Panda app, starting with the dashboard. When you first log into your Max Panda account as an admin or editor, this is what you will see. This is a list of all the work orders that have been submitted in chronological order, so newer work orders are at the top. This is a completely filterable list. For example, if I start typing, looking for a particular work order, it will automatically filter the list for me. As well, I can search by priority, so if I want to see all my urgent work orders, I can filter that out. If I want to see all my cleaning work orders, the list will filter. As well, I can filter by status, due date, close date, staff or vendor, building, location, etc. All the work orders are printable, so I can open it up and print it from within the work order, or I can select multiple work orders at once and click the print button. I can also copy them, download them as CSV, or just do a print screen. Adding new work order buttons are in the top right corner, along the top, or on the left in the left hand menu as well. All accounts come with the support button along the top. If you ever have a question, simply click that and it will bring you to our help desk. Type in your question. If someone else has answered already, the answer will come up for you. If you don't find it here, simply post it to us or send us an email. Some other menu options. If you do end up creating multiple sites within Max Panda, you will see this drop down menu in the upper right hand corner. This lists all the sites that were created. Each site has its own work orders, users, buildings, assets, locations, and users. You can flip between them simply by selecting them from the drop down menu and I get a totally different set of work orders. If you are a company admin or company editor, you'll see this company work orders button under your work orders tab. Clicking this will take all the work orders from all the sites and combine them into one giant list. Some other menu options for you, view overdue. This will quickly filter out all the overdue work orders so you can see what requires your attention. View pending will filter out all the pending ones so you can see what needs your approval. Submit work orders, submit a work order. Staff work orders will let you look up particular staff members and see what they're currently assigned to. My work orders is work orders that you have submitted so you can follow up on their status. And the my to-do list is work orders that have been assigned to you that you must complete. Calendar will take this list of work orders and put it in a calendar for you to see exactly what's due when. Admins and editors will have a calendar full of all the work orders in the accounts. Staff will only see work orders assigned to them. All the work orders show you when it's due, the name of the work order, as well as who's been assigned to it. Everything is color coded so you can see their current status with a nice little chart at the bottom to help you remember the different colors. If you want to know more information on a work order, you can simply click it and it will open up the original work order form so you can make your changes. As well, if you have a work order that you know is not going to get done in a particular time, you can actually drag and drop them to new locations and it will update the work order for you. Calendar is also available in week form if you want to see what the week looks like and by day. Because there's a lot of work orders as an admin or editor, we have a whole bunch of filters you can use to help narrow them down. You can look up work orders on a particular asset, in a particular building, location, staff, vendor, category, status, type, etc. Just click what you're looking for, refresh, and it will filter the calendar for you. If I want to see all my approved work orders, filter that out as well. The PM library stands for Prevention and Maintenance. This is where you can schedule your reoccurring work orders, whether it be a daily one or a yearly inspection. To create a new PM, you can simply select Create New PM, but I'm just going to open one up to show you what they look like. This basically creates a work orders template for you. Fill it out and all the new work orders will pull from this. Creating a PM is very similar to creating a one-time work order. You give it a title, a category, a priority. Generate work orders. You can turn them on or off if you want one to stop generating for a period of time. You still have the add CC, description, notes, upload your files, which will be included on every work order it generates. Choose your location or asset, assign parts, assign your staff and vendors. Schedule is where it gets a little bit different. 
You can set your work order to generate on a daily basis, so every one day or three days or every weekday. You can do it on a weekly basis, so occur every three weeks on Sunday and Friday if you wanted. Monthly, so occur on the 15th day of every three months or the first Tuesday or Monday of every month. Yearly basis, occur every year on a particular date like February 3rd or the first Sunday of January. Next, you want to make it an all-day task or a specific time frame. So all-day task just means it has to be done in by midnight on whatever amount of days you set. So midnight by the third day or midnight on the first day. Or you can assign it minutes. So they have, for example, three hours to complete it. Pick your start date when you want them to start generating. Pick your start time. So if you want this done at 9 a.m. or if you want it done at maybe 5 p.m. No end date. The work orders will keep generating forever until you turn them off. And after a certain amount of occurrences, so for example, generate five work orders and then stop generating them, or give it a hard end date, like stop, generate till the end of summer and then stop, or maybe till the end of the year and then stop. You can add your task list, view attachments, and the PM occurrences lets you know all the work orders that have generated from this template. Once you've finished filling it out, simply click save and your work orders will start to generate. The task library is where you can create a specific set of procedures or tasks that you want completed within the work order. This once again creates a template that can be used over and over again. Simply click create task to make a new one. Here you give it a name, a priority, assign it to which sites you want to have access to it, add a description, and then add your fields. There are numerous different fields you can use. Um, give it a name, text field if you want them to enter some text, numbers for numbers, date if you want them to date stamp it, checkbox if you just want them to check it the box to acknowledge that they have completed the task, or date timestamp if you want it right down to the minute. Click save and it will add it to your list. You can rearrange these, delete them, add new ones, make them all different types as well. You can make them required or not required. If something is not required, the task will not need to be completed to complete the work order. However, if you click this required field, the task will have to be completed before they can complete the work order. Once you have your task list created, click save and it can then be added to work orders. The Company tab is where all the account customization occurs. Only the company admin has access to this tab. This is where you can enter your company information, including uploading your logo. Current plan will let you change your current plan level. So for example, if you need to move up or down a level, simply select it here and click subscribe. As well, if for whatever reason you need to cancel your Max Panda account, you can click the unsubscribe button here. I'm going to cover our plans in a little bit more detail for you. There are five different subscription levels available depending on how many work orders you need to generate in a month. Pending work orders do not count towards your limit until they have been approved. Rejected ones will not count towards your limit. Your scheduled PMs do not count until they have been generated. For example, PMs generate two days before the start date. So all PMs that have generated up till now plus the next two days will count towards your limits. Anything after the next two days will not count yet. At the end of the month, if you had set your work orders to generate every day, that would count as about 30 at the end of the month. When you start to approach your monthly limit, you'll get an email letting you know. If you do approach your limit for work orders in a month, what will happen is you simply won't be able to submit any new work orders. If this happens, you can either wait till your monthly anniversary when the work orders reset back to zero, or you can change your subscription level for the remainder of the month. Going back to the company tab, custom emails, this is where you can customize the email notifications that are sent out. This is account wide, so while you can change what it says, you still want to keep it a little bit generic. Change credit card, this is where you can update your credit card information. Preferences, this is where you can select your preferred time format. Payments made will let you know all payments made on your account. Usage will give you an idea of how much your account is being used. And reset user's password is where you can reset people's passwords. The company setup tab is where all your account customization occurs. I'm not going to cover this in too much detail now as we have a whole video series regarding this, but basically this is where you can set your work order categories, 
create your work order priorities, asset types, location types, asset status, etc. Sites essentially lets you create multiple accounts within your Max Panda account. Each site would have its own users, buildings, locations, assets, and work orders. Sites comes in handy if you have multiple geographical locations or multiple departments that want to share their Max Panda account. For example, a company might have offices in New York and another one in Los Angeles, and the people in New York don't necessarily care what's happening in Los Angeles, and the people in Los Angeles might not care about the work orders submitted in New York. Same goes with departments. Maybe you have maintenance department wants to use Max Panda, and then IT department decides they want to use it as well. IT doesn't need to see the maintenance work requests, and maintenance doesn't need to see the IT work requests. By creating each as a separate site, you can keep them completely separate. Creating a site is easy. All you do is go to Sites Create Sites and give it a name and a description. The amount of sites you can create is limited by the subscription level you go on. For example, Starter only gets the one main site. If you go up to Enhanced, you get your main site plus two others. Standard can have five in total, Pro can have ten, and Enterprise can have twenty different sites. Also located under the Sites tab is the Guest Services. The Guest Portal is enabled on a per-site basis. Buildings is where you can add in your physical buildings. To create, simply click Add Building, fill in the information, and click Save. Buildings could be actual physical buildings, or you can use it as a way to help filter your locations and assets. Locations are your physical locations where work will be carried out. They can be assigned to a building or they can be standalone. For example, if you had a house, your locations might be the living room, the bedroom, the basement, the roof, etc. Adding a new location is easy. Simply select Add Location, give it a name, location type. If it is assigned to a building, select the building from the list. Add a description, and if it's a tenant, for example, you can add the contact name, phone number, and contact email, plus upload any files you might want to be associated with the location. Add its address in and click Save. Location Work Orders lets you look up all the work orders submitted on a particular location. So, for example, I would choose a date range, I could then choose a building or a specific location. Hit refresh and it will tell me all the work orders that have been submitted for that building or location in the date range I have selected. Assets are your pieces of equipment. They could be assigned to a location or they can be standalone. For example, you can assign an air conditioner in a room in a building or you could just have a company vehicle. And just like adding a location, adding an asset is very easy. Simply click Create Asset and fill in the details. This could include a name, description, model, choose an asset type, status type, asset tag. This could be very important when you have many of the same asset. The asset tag helps distinguish between them. Serial number, manufacturer, manufacturer information, supplier, vendor info, installation date, warranty date, as well as you can set email reminders when the warranty date is approaching any labor notes or part notes you want to add, add CC, initial cost, notes, assign it to a building location if you want, and upload any files you want associated with it. Then simply click Save. And just like locations, you can also look up work order history on a particular asset. Once again, select your date range, and you can make it for a particular asset, or you can look up an entire category of assets, such as all your air conditioners or all your HVACs. Fill in the information, click Refresh, and it'll bring up all the asset history. Parts is your inventory. To create a new part, simply click Create Part. Then all you need to do is fill in the part information. Give it a name, assign a part number, assign which sites you want to be able to access the part. 
you can set your current on hand quantity. So for example, if I have 20 on hand, I could add this here. I could add a unit price, such as if it costs $5 a unit. As well, I can set a minimum level. If I choose to set a minimum level and I click send email, what this will do is as the parts are consumed on work orders, your quantity level will decrease. When it hits the minimum level, it will actually send you an email reminder letting you know that it's time to order new parts. Other part information in the track, notes, supplier, vendor information, installation date, warranty dates with email reminder, labor notes, parts notes, storage location if you want to remember where they're stored, and attach any files such as maybe a picture of the part. Then just click save. Once a part is created, or an asset or a building added, it will automatically generate a QR code. This QR code can then be downloaded and used however you'd like, whether you want to place it on the part, asset, or location itself to be scanned, or if you just want to paste it on a website. When the QR code is scanned by our mobile app, it will give you the option to submit a work order on that part, asset, or location, look up past work orders, as well as view the information on it. Staff and users is where you can invite new users in as well as maintain your current users. To invite new users into your account, simply click Invite User. All you have to do here is put their email addresses. You can do multiple people at once to separate email addresses with a semicolon. Choose the role you want them to have, choose a site, and click Invite. You can check to see if the users have accepted your invitation under the Invited Users option. Here it lists all the invitations that were sent out as well as if the account was created or not. If someone has not created their account, such as user created false, or if they did not get the invitation, simply click the edit button next to their name. Here you have the option of resending the invitation. Click resend invitation, save, and they should get a new email invitation. To see your current list of users, select user list from the staff users menu option. Here you can see all the users in your account. By selecting the blue edit button next to their name, you can make changes to their account. Here you can update the user information. For example, if they leave the company, you can disable the account here. Or if you need to assign them to a new role or a new site, you can do that here as well. Users can actually be assigned to multiple sites and can have a different user role in each site. To assign them to new sites, simply click Add, simply select a role and a site. You also have the option to assign them an hourly rate. This will be used to help calculate labor costs when you generate your work order reports. And finally, you also have the option to set a default location. What this does is when they log in and submit a work order, the building and location will be pre-populated on the work order submission form. This is really good if you have tenants, for example. Click Save, and you can see the new site has been added to their permissions. Make sure you click Save when you're finished. Vendors are any outside vendors or contractors you may use. Just like everything else, if you want to add a new vendor, simply click Create Vendor, and fill in their details. I'm going to open one up so you can see the details of it. Simply put their vendor name, phone number, email, and if you want to invite them in as a user into your Max Panda account, once an email address is added, you can choose a role and click invite, and they will get an email invite just like your staff. They create a username and password, and they can start logging into the system to complete work orders. You can assign them to one site or multiple sites, add any notes you want on the vendor, attach any files such as a contract, fill in their information, click save. Just like assets and locations, if you want to see past work a vendor has done, simply go to vendor work orders under the vendors tab. Select the date range, add whichever vendors you want to look up, and hit refresh. You'll then see a list of all the work orders that the vendor has been assigned to. Max 
Panda comes with 10 pre-generated reports. Please note that editors cannot see the reports. Only company admins and site admins have access to this tab. The first report is the work order status. This simply provides a snapshot of your account. The work order summary report lets you see all the work orders submitted during a specific time frame. For example, if I want to see all the work orders that were submitted during a particular month, I would enter it into the calendar, hit refresh report, and it would generate all the work orders submitted. This would include work order number, title, status, start and due date, completed close date, building, type, category, hours, labor, parts, invoice, and total. So for example, this work order here, I can see that 10 hours and 15 minutes were spent on it, 116 was for labor, $152 for parts, a $94.50 invoice was attached, and the total amount for this work order was $362.50. At the very end of the report, you can find the grand totals for each category as well as the total amount of money spent on work orders in the time frame you submitted. This report can be printed off as well. You can download it in numerous different ways including PDF, CVS, and Excel. If you'd like a report that's a little bit more specific, we have many other reports to choose from. You can run very similar report by asset, building, location, labor, and vendor. So for example, the asset cost summary. This one runs a very similar report, but it focuses on assets. Here I can choose a single asset, all the assets, multiple assets, whatever I'd like. Choose a date range again. And refresh report. Here it brings up all the work orders submitted on a particular asset in that date range, separated out by asset. So my Ford F-150, for example, had three work orders last month, and I can see their titles here, as well as all the hours, labor, parts, and invoices associated with each, as well as the grand total for that asset in the date range specified. This report can also be printed off or downloaded in numerous files. The building cost summary report is very similar to the asset cost summary report, but organized by building instead of assets. Same goes for location. You can view your costs by location. The labor cost summary lets me see all the work orders specific staff have been assigned to. So for example, if I add my staff, choose my date, I can see all the work orders that staff members have worked on. Here as well, I can see title, statuses, start dates, close date, their rate of pay, the hours they worked, and the cost you paid them per work order job, as well as the cost of the work order itself. Vendor cost summary works much the same way as the labor cost summary. The other two types of reports we have is the asset thresholds and the location thresholds. What this does is when you're setting up your account, you can associate a threshold level with specific assets or locations. Say you expect two work orders in a 365 day period. If that asset gets zero, one, or two work orders, it would not appear on this report. If it received three, four, or more work orders, it would then come up on this report letting you know that more work has been done on a specific asset or location than expected. This can be useful in helping predict end of life or maybe there's an underlying problem you may not have noticed because the work orders were so spread out. The final report is the submitter summary. This just lets you see who's been submitting work orders within your organization. Add your users. Select a date range and refresh report. Here you can see your user as well as all the work orders they submitted and the total cost for each one. Invoices are used to help capture internal costs. For example, if you hired a contractor for a job, they might provide you with a paper invoice. This could be attached to the work order itself, however, you wouldn't be able to capture those costs in your report. 
What you can do in that case is come to the Invoices tab and create or add a new invoice. What you want to do is basically recreate that invoice here. Pick your type, description, unit prices, quantity, set your taxes in the company tab, and save. These invoices can then be attached to the work order in order to better capture the true cost of a work order. Gallery takes all those images and files that have been uploaded to your work order and groups them here for easy viewing. This way you don't have to go digging through every work order to find a particular file.